things start. Here we go. So, creating other kin spaces. All right. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a talk about creating other kin spaces IRL. Um, we've got Bardu and Scar here. Uh, it's going to go over sort of internet safety, how to advertise for spaces online, red flags to look out for before you meet up while everything is still online, uh, general safety for uh, that kind of meetup, and just finding good activities to do to keep your group sort of alive. So we're going to start with internet safety, because that's kind of going to be the basis of how everything else works out. <laughs> Um, so, first things first, um, you still should be relatively safe on the internet. Um, you don't want to dox yourself or give out personal information. So, really, um, whenever you don't know someone yet and you're trying to make a group, taking pictures of yourself and out of, like, landmarks, um, where people can kind of figure out where you are and posting it in public, not a great idea. Um, you don't want people finding generally where you live or close to where you live, especially when you don't know someone. It's just not great. Right, um, even when you're meeting up with somebody in real life, you don't want to get too familiar too fast. Yeah. So, whenever you are beginning to advertise, um, like me and Bardo, or I guess Bardo since he made the server, um, advertised for Central Texas. So that's a pretty big area. Um, I would say an hour radius, basically, to get anywhere in Central Texas. So you're not really giving like super detailed area, but just enough where if there are people in that area you could easily meet, helps a lot. And you're still not giving someone like where you live exactly. Uh, then we get to actually creating tags on social media and a um, good platforms to find others. We had good experience with Tumblr. Um, I'm sure you could do... I've seen people use Reddit for meeting up with people. Um, maybe Instagram. I've, I've used Instagram before. That worked out. Uh, you can create tags on Instagram same way you can on Tumblr. Yeah, so it can be a bit more organized. Um, you might be able to steal like the Reddit... Um, format where you kind of use, hey, this is generally my location. Um, this is generally like uh, what I'm looking for, like other kin activities or maybe your kin type. Uh, and then other people that are searching either in that subreddit or something like that can find it if they're searching for like Central Texas, it'll come up. So that can make things a bit easier. Um, so. With that kind of thing, though, I would probably recommend having, like, a server or something where you can still get to know the person before you actually meet up, because there is a pretty frequent problem with Reddit, especially, where people just jump straight to the meet part, and it would be a great idea to get to know them before you do that. Yeah. Um, for resources, we can go ahead and link some. Um... Generally, we're using our, like, lived experience, though, <laughs> for a lot of this, uh, since a, uh, Bardo runs a server for a uh, Central Texas Therians, um, and we've both been running that and then meeting other kin IRL for, I don't know, has it been, like, two years now, roughly? Yeah, two yeah, like, years. two years. So, that's kind of what we're kind of going off of right now, and then we can find some general internet safety overviews and link it and then our written stuff as well will be good right we can use our own written resources um i can also write up some extra stuff that might be a good idea yeah um so back to discord um i would really consider not using like a workplace or a personal information discord like a um if you have a Discord that's linked to all your other accounts um, that uses that same email, I wouldn't really suggest doing that with meeting other people that are possibly going to be in the same area as you, especially when you don't know them, because some people can be stalkers <laughs> and figure out what email it, your, it is. Um, 
So I would just kind of use a junk email for your Discord, it makes things a bit safer. So if they search it on the internet, it doesn't connect to anything, they won't find like you're indeed. Um, very, very good. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, don't click on links in Discord servers that you can't tell what they're from. Like, if you're glancing over the hyperlink or that blue link that you click, and it doesn't look like YouTube or Tumblr domain that you can recognize, probably shouldn't touch it. Uh, especially when it's like someone that just randomly popped in and is like, please click my link. I totally want to get to meet you. Ha 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 ha. Totally. For sure. For sure. Yeah. That, uh, Sephora, that's a great point right there. That's kind of what I used as a bit of a basis for my guidelines. I think that's a really great way to put it. Um, for the next part, I wanted to talk a little bit about how to advertise for meetups or for like servers um, based in local areas, because I feel like that's where a whole lot of attempts at creating IRL spaces die. You make a little server for people um, in your area, but you don't do a particularly good job of getting it out there enough for people actually in your area to see it, because the other com community is really scattered and we're spread really thin across the whole world. Um, so things need to spread pretty far to actually hit people that it'll apply to. Uh, I had really good luck with Tumblr with my uh, Central Texas kin server. Um, just uh, using a whole lot of tags um, to get, you know, all of the groups that might be included. You'll also want... Um, Ooh, there should be audio. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, you should probably make a fairly, like, flashy uh, advertisement post. You don't want something small that's just like, hey, Ken in this area, join if you want. I like to advertise the kind of, like, um, bots you have, any, like moderation experience you have, stuff that lets people really trust that it's going to be a good server with good safety nets um, attached to it, because there's a certain amount of vulnerability involved in any situation where you're meeting up with people in real life or meeting other people even in your area. You know, that already tells people roughly where you are, and that's a decent amount of vulnerability. If they're going to be seeing you in real life, that's even more. So you want to make sure that people see your server and are going to trust you and the server to be a place where they can have that amount of vulnerability. And a lot of that is going to be in your advertisement for it. Because if they're not seeing that right away, then they're not going to try, probably. Um, with, uh, with my experience, I mostly did... Uh, tags for Tumblr, because that also allows people to reblog and spread it even further. I don't use Twitter, but I think Twitter works the same. Um, Instagram can also work, but just not as well, because the only real way to share stuff on there is with the stories, and it's just so picture-based. But hey, it works. Um... Moving on from that to kind of like red flags when you're interacting with someone uh, pre-meetup. Uh, Twitter and X. No. <laughs> no. Um, so interacting with people pre-meetup is probably when you're going to do your best job of noticing red flags. Because once you're actually meeting in person, it might be too late for that. Uh, so some stuff that you're going to want to look for when you're still interacting with them online is going to be trying to push boundaries. Like if you say, hey, I'm not okay with this, and they still keep trying to kind of do it or be like, no, it's okay, man. You know, we live in the same area. We're going to be best friends. Jumping to that best friend stage is also a big one. Some people try to call themselves your friend way too fast just because they live in the same area. Um, a big one is going to be if they want to meet in non-public neutral spaces, 
Uh, if you're trying to organize a meetup and somebody says like, oh, hey, my house is great or whatever, that's a bad idea. Don't do that. Uh, you're going to want to meet <laughs> somewhere with lots of people around that doesn't have, I guess you could say, an advantage for anyone involved. If someone says, hey, I want to see my cat come to my house, don't do it. <laughs> Especially if you haven't met them in person before. That's like, a, it sounds really fun, not gonna lie, to just see someone's cat, but better to uh, not do that and meet them at like a Denny's than to waddle into their house and see uh, whatever could be there, so. Right, yeah, yeah. If they want to show you your cat, their cat, they can send a picture of the cat. <laughs> and we're gonna go over like good public spaces to use in a second, we'll come back to that. Uh, additionally, you might also see people asking for too personal of information. That's a big one that you got to watch out for. They really don't need anything other than like your name, your rough age, your kin types, probably. Mother's um, maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, hobbies, stuff that you might enjoy doing together for the meetup. They're not going to need anything further than that, really, at first. Um, after you know each other better, of course, they can know personal information. But I would give it, you know, a good few actual IRL meetups before you start getting super personal. Um, one that sticks out, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows this, but like uncomfortable flirty behavior, not good. If you're setting limits for, you know, how people are allowed to talk to you and they're continually breaking those to try to hit on you, ask for too many pictures of you, weird, uncomfortable compliments, that kind of thing, that's another big red flag because that's only going to get worse when you're meeting in person. I would cut it off right there. You can absolutely kick someone to the curb. All you have to do is bring it up with whoever the head is, or if you are the head of that, you just confront that person and be like, hey, you're making some people uncomfortable. We've been getting some DMs about this. You need to either change your behavior or you're getting out of here. If it's too extreme, where they're not even, where they're like, you know, straight up uncomfortable, crossing over boundaries, they get the boot out of here, banned from going and meeting with the rest of the group. Right, yeah. Don't be afraid to contact the head of any of those spaces, or if you are the head, to just kick people. It's fine. If somebody's making someone uncomfortable, you don't need to worry about being nice to them. Get out. <laughs> um, and kind of for that reason, I would really recommend getting to know the people online before you ever meet up. And I mean really get to know them. I like to think of this kind of thing as I'm making an online friend who I'm coincidentally going to meet in person at some point. The end goal shouldn't be I'm going to meet people in person. The goal should be I'm making friends and you're going to want to get to know those friends uh, online. And then when you meet them in person, it'll be kind of a new stage of getting to know them. But you should know them well enough before you even do the in-person part. Just so there's a little bit of energy, so everyone's not T-posing in a circle. That right. can be kind of hard to break for everyone, especially if everyone's nervous. Yeah. And if there isn't, like, kind of, like, if everyone's kind of new to it, because, like, man, who has experience making groups IRL? You kind of got to start somewhere. If it's the first one you do, it can be hard to set the tone, get it right, so... Doing stuff online really helps with getting kind of like a group and dynamic together, some in-jokes, so people are less stressed out. Yeah, everyone's got a tea posted in a circle at the Chipotle, and then we call it good. That was a good meetup. We all leave. Very, very good. Um, yeah, because like I have a friend who's told me about Ken Meets that he's been to before, where... It was just, uh, we're meeting at this time, show up. Nobody really knew each other until they showed up. And it always just kind of fizzled because everybody's nervous. There's no group dynamic at the moment. Meanwhile, with groups that I've done, at least, I've tried to get everybody friendly, have some group dynamics going on online before we meet in person. And that's made things run a lot smoother. 
And with public places, what would be a good public place to take a bunch of animals? Well, the zoo is a fantastic place. Boy, oh boy. What a great place to meet people. I really liked the experience whenever we did that with our group. Um, that was a lot of fun, running around being like, oh, mood, mood, wow, look at him, mood, mood, mood. <laughs> right, everybody gets to try to spot their kin type, maybe. Zoos usually have other stuff, like food courts, a little train. <laughs> Crawl into the exhibit. Right, yeah, <laughs> there's lots to do. Your kin types are probably around. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can go hit up arcades. Arcades are pretty cool if everyone's a gamer or not. Um, depends on whatever a, um, you're feeling uh, with the group, of course. Uh, bowling alleys are pretty common. Um, I see those a lot for furry meetups. Uh, I haven't tried one of those personally, because we've kind of been more nature-oriented with, like, hiking swimming once we got to know each other a bit better and everyone was all right with it um we've done some what else have we done we've done um, a lot we've done like swimming movies restaurants hiking uh when me and scar first met we met at a little like farmer's market and craft market kind of deal that was really good because they had lots of stuff that could be considered gear. There are tons of stalls to walk around in. It was really good. Yeah. Um, if everyone's of age, bars are also good. Um, you just kind of have to make sure everyone's, like, got their own transport. They know where they're going. Someone knows when they'll be back. I probably wouldn't do it at night for a first meetup. Maybe just, like, get a beer, get a burger, call it good, chill out. Right. Nothing crazy. You can also do, like, Comic Cons or Ren Fairs. I really love kin meets at Renaissance Festivals. Um, there's all kinds of, like, high fantasy and animal stuff around. It's, it's great. I'm seeing a lot of reference to, like, parks and stuff in the chat. I would say I probably wouldn't do a park for, like, an initial meet, just because that's kind of private. It's really easy to get somebody alone. At a, at a big park. Um, I guess it kind of depends on the type of park, but just something to consider. Yeah, you just kind of want other public people around just to kind of make it a more neutral space. Right, keep people accountable. Um, so if you're trying to figure out for your group, um, ages are always a fun thing to go over. Do you want minors in your group? And if so, you know, how are you going to navigate that? Personally, we are not minor friendly, I believe. Yeah, we, we have a uh, pack, and because we're adult led, we're going to stick to adults. If um, anything with minors, I'll be real, I wouldn't recommend minors yeah. meeting anybody that anything like this online. If you were going to, maybe if it was something set at like a furry convention with your parents going or something like that. Yeah, you kind of like a. Uh, uh, Jeez, a minor has to have a guardian, basically. Like, it can be their brother, it can be their parents, but it needs to be someone who is there to watch them <laughs> and will not leave them alone, for sure. Um, because that's a, it's just a bad it's idea. It's just a risk. Yeah, it's just a big risk. And that's just not a great thing to bring into uh, a bunch of people just meeting. Um, another thing to do, you can do video calls to see who you're talking to, uh, just to get to know one another, see what's up, see and, like each other. Right, and make sure that everybody is who they say they are, make sure you don't get the guy that says they're, you know, a cool 20-year-old dude, and then it turns out to be like a 40-year-old man. Um, yeah. Just, you know, make sure everybody is who they say they are. It's a good way to get some age verification without having to ask for it. Um, it also might be a good idea to say that you need IDs for the meetup. Um, that way, nobody really gets singled out. You can do it just like the age verification at OtherCon here, just, you know, an ID with everything. 
blurt out uh, other than um, birthday. Yeah. That's really all you need, and it's a good, safe way to make sure that everybody's kind of around the same age, just because... A, people that are sort of in the same age group are probably going to have better ideas of, like, activities they want to do together. They've got some more stuff in common. And it's a good way to make sure, again, that everybody is who they say they are. Yes. <laughs> Gotta make sure everyone's on the same page with that stuff. Um, so now we'll get into, like, all right. What do we do? We've got a group. We've maybe like met up one time, did an event, got food at Denny's at three a.m. We've <laughs> please called three someone. <laughs> um, it's all been good bonding experiences for us thus far. But like, we want to do more things. What should we do? Um, first of all, uh, I think talking and gaming online between meets, because like for us, realistically, it's like once a month to meet up with people. So between then, like, video calls or chatting, learning each other's hobbies, and then, like, making a plan to be, like, if everyone likes stuffed animal making, we all go to Joanne's Fabrics, pick out fabrics together, share prints and stuff, make maybe a shared project if we're feeling up for it, that kind of deal. Shared, uh, like, DIY stuff is a really great, like, team building activity, kind of. Oh, yeah. Um, it's fun. <laughs> and you can all make stuff related to your kin types. You could make gear together. You could throw in it back to the Ontopunk panel. You know, you could customize your own clothing, that kind of thing. Yeah. There's a lot of options. Um, I feel like once you've met people three or four times, it's more safe to, at that point, if you trust them and get good vibes, I would say. Uh, multiple different places. Um, malls are good. Like going, to, out, going out to eat, hitting up a shop afterwards is fun, or going to the bar afterwards to chill out. Because you might end up with people that have, like, very different interests, and you don't want anybody to feel left out, like, we're, oh, we're always doing Bardu's thing, or whatever. Yeah. So, it's a good idea to maybe have, like, multiple things planned for a meet. You can, you know, go around and uh, engage in a few different activities that people are going to enjoy. I would say, as kind of a caveat for that, just back to the safety stuff for a second... I wouldn't, I, for that, I would make sure everybody has their own transportation. Um, I wouldn't really carpool until you guys know each other a lot better. Um, and we also don't want to leave anybody else out on the chance that they don't have a car or can't drive or whatever. So if you're going to be hitting up multiple places, definitely talk about transportation first. Yeah. Um, and for, like... If you're starting to get a larger group where you kind of need, like, a leader to lead things instead of it being, like, three or four people where you're like, hey, guys, what do you want to do? Where there kind of needs to be a set event. Um, consider, like, disabilities, limitations, where there can be someone who's the designated, like, person or leader of the group that people can DM safely and be like, hey, I don't like this activity. I think it would do X or Y, whatever reason. They don't even have to really give one. Um, so the coordinator can go ahead and redirect to make it more fitting and comfortable for everyone. Um, this also goes for safety. If someone gets a weird vibe, there should always be one person to talk to so they can be like, all right, cool. Booted. <laughs> right. And I see mention of not a single leader, but a small group of admins. That kind of thing works, too. You just need somebody that has some authority that people can uh, feel safe going to and talking about if something isn't accessible to them, if someone's making them uncomfortable, that kind of thing. Um, like, say... I have um, EDS, so sometimes my joints are really bad. If I was going to an event that was hiking in the heat or whatever, I really might want to be able to like talk to somebody and say, hey, I, I can't do that, actually. Um, I'm having a bad flare-up today. And they would be able to pick something else that would be Very good. <laughs> Without having to... Forcing that person to be like, hi, everyone, um, not to be the killjoy in public chat and be like, I can't do that. And that's a lot of attention on someone for something that's really not their fault. So 
much better for the coordinator to just be like, hey guys, actually we can't do that. We gotta change it. Let's start over again. Um, and that doesn't, that can go for anything. It can be, this activity is too overwhelming for me, or um, we can we go to a different restaurant? This one doesn't fit with my dietary limitations, or even just like, Something like, hey, I don't feel comfortable going swimming with the group because that shows a lot of skin. Could we do something else? Um, anything like that, you want an easy way for somebody to be able to express their boundaries without having to be put on the spot about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we can get into activities based on kin types. Um, so I kind of think it kind of depends on the composition of the group itself. Uh, like right now, our <laughs> I think our group is primarily doggies. We got a lot of doggies in the group. Um, and then we've got a few like other people, but I think we've got a few themes, I guess. Once you start talking to people, you can kind of see what everyone jives with. Um, throwing out a lot of ideas out there of what makes them feel euphoric and seeing what connects with other people, going to different places or picking something that feels more inclusive. Um, like for us, if every meet was like doggy time where we went to the pet store and picked out dog toys, I think that might leave out like the boar in our group to be like, I mean, I can get to this, but like, I also don't feel super included. So, you know, right. You want everybody to feel included by kin type. Like they maybe we're all predatory kin type. So we're like, Hey, we can have a meet and like go hunting or something. And then we have one deer who's going to hate that activity. <laughs> yeah. You so. wouldn't want to do anything like that. <laughs> Meet and greet, though. Meet and greet. Meet. And That's greet. good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. So yeah, it might be a good idea to talk about like what things make people euphoric, and try and base activities around that. Uh, including as many people as possible. If you can't hit everybody, that's where going to multiple places and doing multiple things comes in again. Mm -hmm. Um, like. Yeah, yeah, just make sure everybody's feeling included based on uh, kin type. Uh, there's always been a bit of an issue with that. Like, even most kin meets are called howls, which is obviously super canine centric. There are tons yeah. of people that don't want to howl when they're uh, going to a meetup or that that wouldn't jive with, I guess, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I can also say things not to do from personal experience. I was, or am, probably a bit riskier than I should be. Like, maybe driving six hours up to a different state and meeting someone I've never met in real life. And maybe that turned out to be a bad idea. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> um, if you really want to meet someone that's far away, I would either say, I would say get a hotel at a different place, because for me, I decided to stay with them. Because um, we're like, we're friends. We've been friends for two years. You're other kin, I'm other kin. This is going to be great. We're going to have a lot of fun. You meet, doesn't quite work out. Now I have to find a hotel to stay at on the fly. Mm, yeah, so just prepare yourself whenever you're meeting someone, especially if it's long distance like that, to have a kind of a plan B. Um, and like, how you expect to either go home quickly, or have to make an excuse, anything like that. Uh, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, people online can act very differently than they do in real life. And I think it's really important to remember that anybody can put up any sort of mask, I guess you could say, yeah. online, and not be like that when you meet them in person. And sometimes that can be a little fun. It's like I'm getting to re-get to know you on a different level, and that's great. But also sometimes it can be bad. <laughs> You're not who I thought you were, and... You know, uh -oh. our dynamic does not work in real life the way that it did online, and now everything sucks. 
So I just think like it's important to remember that you can know somebody really well online, and that does not mean you know them really well in actuality. Yeah. <laughs> It's important to keep that up and just always have a plan B of what to do if things just don't work out. Just always keep that in your mind whenever you're first meeting someone. A lot of hurdles, I think, when it comes to IRL, it's always like the, I'd say like the first two times meeting people. Yeah. That's kind of whenever you're gauging, like how much danger there is and stuff. Are they cool? Are they chill? You know? Is this a safe space for me? Do I feel comfortable? Um, so there's definitely a lot more planning for the first two. And then once you start getting more comfortable, it becomes like just a regular IRL friend group, I would say. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. And I can't emphasize enough how amazing it is to have uh, an IRL Ken friend group. It's been really great for me the past two years. It's something that I always wanted when I was uh, a youngin in the community. <laughs> I guess I still am, but you know. Yeah. I guess I should say. And now that I have it, it's amazing. Um, you can really be yourself on a level that it's hard to be with people that are fully human. Um... <laughs> Bark with your friends. It's great. Yes. <laughs> Everyone I uh, really likes to, like, there will be, like, a deer or something, and the entire car is like, whoa, deer, and that's <laughs> a good experience for me. I really like that. It is, yeah. Everybody can bark and make funny animal noises. You can wear gear together. That's a fun one. I feel much more safe wearing, like, heavy gear if I'm in a group of other people that are also doing it yeah. than I do doing that by myself. You know, if you've got a whole gang of people rolling up wearing foxtails, that's the squad. Feels a lot, uh, I don't know, a lot more okay, I guess, yeah. than doing it alone, at least in Texas. Yeah, safety in numbers. <laughs> the cool kids on the block. Yes. <laughs> the squad rolling out to Denny's with their dog ears and dog tails. Yeah. Hanging out. Um, we can open it to questions. Do you guys have anything specific uh, you guys would like us to cover? Um, I would also say, too, um, not to give up hope. Like, a, uh, I think for... What happened? I don't know. Okay, we good? We good? Okay, cool. Technical difficulty. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, I would say, like, it takes a bit. I think your server was up for a hot minute uh, before something actually came together. It can take a decent amount of time to actually get a solid group, especially the first two or three people. But once you have that foundation, it seems to spread pretty fast. Um, it does, yeah. And also, sometimes it can take a long time to find people in your area. I kind of tried to do that for years. I've been in the Kin community since 2016, I think. And I only just found a solid group of IRL uh, Kin friends like two years ago. Yeah. Patience and hope is key, I would say. Um, and it can be really hard um, whenever there is something like, man, this is like the third person I've met, and it's been like six months, but I don't think they're a good fit for the group. They're not vibing with like me and the other person. I would really suggest to just go ahead and break things off with them, even if it's really hard. Like, this is the only other person we've met. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Creating a healthy environment is a lot more important than just kind of like trying to make things feel more alive sometimes, um, especially if they're making other people feel unsafe. Ooh, okay. We got a question for tips about finding people outside of North America because most alter humans are in the USA. Um, hmm. So we are both in the USA, so we don't really have any personal experience with that, but I would say uh, it probably kind of depends on where you are. In some ways, 
you might kind of luck out because like say Britain or whatever is way smaller than Texas. So you could find people anywhere across a smaller country like that and possibly be able to meet up. Um, hmm. In Europe, um, Europe is wild to me uh, because like you can get a train to straight up just a different country. So if there's someone in Germany and someone in Italy, you might be able to set aside some money and meet somewhere neutral. Um, someone can either get a train, transportation, however they see fit, if they've got like a card. Um, so things like that. I think advertisement's probably going to be key. Um, and then trying to organize meetups where if you're having to do a broader scope for people, where instead of looking for like an hour away, you're looking for two or three hours. You kind of want to basically look at a map and be like, all right, so this person's roughly in Germany. I'm in Italy. Someone's in Spain. What's a good center point for us to meet? So everyone kind of takes a bit of that. Um, it's not super expensive for like one person to get to everyone else, kind of just trying to make it fair. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Uh, public transport's probably your friend over there. Um, I know a decent amount of people in Britain. Like a, um, I've met, I think, three or four people now yeah. that are British. So I mean, they're out there. They I've exist. Met quite just... a few from Australia. Yep, Australia is a good one for sure. Uh, we've got another question. What would you recommend if giving the most far out description of your area still gives an incredibly small area? Ah, I that's know. Kind of tricky. Yeah, um, if you're like, I'm in Massachusetts, and Massachusetts is the size that it is, pretty small, unlike Central Texas. Um, I it might be a good idea to just give the state, in yeah. that case, or General's. country, because um, I feel like what's most important is how many people are in that area, not the size of the area itself, because... The reason that you're trying to keep some uh, anonymity is based on, like, how many people are around, not based on how big the actual area itself is. Because the thing that gives you that amount of anonymity is the people, not not the actual land covered. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, I'm I'm not sure, actually. I'm awkward in public. Any tips on getting around that? I feel like that is where doing activities is really going to come in hand for you. If all of the pressure isn't on socializing and everybody else is instead working on doing something together, that takes a whole lot of the social pressure off. It helps a lot. And then you end up getting more comfortable with people uh, with time as well. I really enjoy having like a general activity everyone's doing, um, whether that's like art, a puzzle, going to the arcade together, uh, something like that where there's another center focus. So um, I think that's pretty good. Helps a lot, activities for sure. Let's see here, looking for questions. you have any advice for someone who doesn't have a car or otherwise can't drive? Uh, um, it probably depends on how available public transport is in your area. Uh, if you've got public transport, um, I would try to organize activities around somewhere close to where that public transport drops off. Obviously, that's kind of harder if you live in any basically in not a city or even just in the U.S. because our, our public transport infrastructure really sucks. Um, what I would do in that case is if you have someone who can reliably drive you, give them a time and place where you'll be and maybe just make your first meetup a really short one, something like an hour at lunch at like Denny's or something where you get there, uh, you eat, and then by the time that person's back, you guys are already done with the interaction. Um, and somewhere public, of course, will make things a lot safer um, if you really wanted to go. 
or that person can accompany you just to keep an eye on it in case you need to go like ASAP. I would probably just let uh, whoever uh, is driving you know that like there is the potential for you to in like 15 minutes be like, hey, I gotta go. And for them to just kind of be on alert about that. Do you have any tips for if you have difficulty speaking to others online? I find my social anxiety is worse talking to folks online than it is especially as most online kin spaces seem to be big groups, but I wouldn't want to meet anyone without knowing them well online first. Uh, I will say when you're making kin spaces online specific to your area, those are probably going to be a lot smaller than the kin spaces that you're used to. Like my, my Texas server, I think topped out at like 20 people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's even with a huge state like Texas. Um, if it's a local space, it's probably going to be a lot smaller. And I would also say, if you're having a hard time talking online, it's okay to lurk. It, you'll, you'll get to know people somewhat just by watching how they interact with others, and you might end up being comfortable enough to talk more. If not, you can lurk and decide if you feel comfortable with them based on their interactions with other people and show up to one of the meets, hopefully with a group. Yeah. Um, and you should still be okay as long as the meeting is like a group of people. Yeah. Should be okay. Let's see here. What else we got? Do, 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 do. In Brazil, kins and Therians mix themselves with furries and don't talk much about kin aspects of life. What would you do if you were in this region? That's interesting. So, I would probably just kind of talk about those aspects in life with that group and see who resonates with it, basically. Um, eventually, I feel as though anyone who resonates with it or basically, like, responds being like, hey, I actually get that too, you can kind of just create your own space um, and just start that separation yourself, I guess. Um, there's probably going to be some bleed over, uh, but you'll at least find people who resonate with your experiences to some degree. Is it safe to ask in a space anyone here living near Insert City if it's a big city? Totally. Um, I usually say I live in the Austin area, and the Austin area has so many people that that's totally fine. Uh, as long as there's an area that has tons of people, it's probably safe to say I live in this metropolitan area. I wouldn't say, like, anybody live on 4th Street or whatever. But um, if it's a whole city, that's probably going to be fine. I also like Orion's suggestion for a preloaded card for a taxi, Uber, or Lyft. Uh, if you need a drive but can't drive yourself, that's a great suggestion. I would definitely suggest that. Um, let's see. I think people moved a lot of their questions of a, um, their questions to panel questions, so we can go ahead and continue there. What's your best advice for finding alter humans? Um, I would say if there's not a space for um, other kin in your area, uh, make one. There's no reason to think, you know, oh, I'm like a small account or whatever, I can't do this. You totally can. Um, with good advertising and a well-moderated area, uh, you can totally get the word out, because I assure you, other alter humans in your area also want to meet um, IRL friends. It's pr a pretty consistent theme in the community. Also, um, uh, some experiences we've had, pagan communities, we, or I went to a pagan club, and we met some alter humans there, just naturally. Uh, we weren't really looking for it, that's kind of just what happened. And then uh, the same with like LGBTQ spaces as well. Um, I see alter humans kind of sneaking around in there. So you don't even necessarily have to only advertise uh, to just like Tumblr and online spaces. You can also just like go to like a pagan meet and talk to people, get to know them. You might run into like a demon 
a werewolf. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, and of course that does ha require you having some level of comfort comfort talking about your own experiences with being alter human because it's hard to find alter humans naturally like that without you being open because we're in general a pretty like closeted community i would say yeah um so it's a good idea if you're gonna try to meet them naturally in the wild to be all right with talking about those experiences or if you don't want to say i'm alter human or whatever you might be able to just sort of bring it up in casual conversation engage people's reactions um that kind of thing might work out as well or you know, I haven't had any luck with this stuff where you wear, like, a Theta Delta necklace or whatever, but you might. <laughs> yeah, hey, you never know. Oh yeah, there's the big map. Thanks for the heads up, Paige. Uh, yeah, there's the other Connect map as well. If you guys want to just, like, drop things for where you generally are, you might be surprised of the people who are around there. Um, it's always really surprising looking on maps for that, too. So, for uh, more fun situations, um, what would you recommend for... So, this is going to be more adult content, I guess, or descriptions. Like, let's say that there's some abuse going on, or you notice someone in an abusive situation, um, specifically for minors. At that point, you have a few different options. You kind of do have a responsibility, especially if you're the leader. Um, you might have to either reach out to a social worker, um, depending on the abuse, maybe parents or parental guardians. Um, you may want to do some online research and see, you know, like, what would be best to handle in that situation, what would be some good situations in, like, your local area, because laws are different from what part of the world you're in as well. So, you'd kind of have to look, but generally I would say parental guardian, if it doesn't, um, include them, or some kind of social work or government program, usually that is focused on abuse for minors. As folks who organize these groups already, what would you say is the best way to check for pre-existing communities in your area? Um, hmm. uh, you could probably use Disboard for one, just check if there are any Discord communities for your area on there. It might be worth giving, like, Tumblr tags a check, a quick search on, like, Instagram tags. Um, if you're on forums, you could look on there. Um, but really, I would say if you're not finding them easily, then other people probably also aren't finding them easily. And you can make your own. Again, if you're, uh, if you're comfortable with making your own, I would still suggest that. Even if there are other groups organized, uh, you're not going to be harming them by making more. Yeah, honestly, I would say the more the merrier in this kind of situation. Yeah, typically groups like that too. If you guys like, if you're like, oh, hey, you're from here and I'm from here, our group should just meet up. <laughs> yeah, that so, works too. It kind of works out. I feel like eventually you kind of bump into people, especially whenever you're advertising yourself. Someone may eventually be like, hey man, I am also a part of a different uh, group, so what up? We should a, uh, get to know each other. Uh, yes, there is a other connect map. Yeah, for Turtle, um, if you... Here, I'll just reply to it so you can see it. There you go. 
And Meetup does cost money. I would recommend Meetup if it didn't cost like $15 to be a leader. And Meetup hurts too, because I'll get on that and I'll look up like the word otherkin and there will be like 100 people interested, but no one wants to pay the $15. And like, man, I don't have $15 to spare either. So <laughs> Tumblr it is. Um, if someone ever has the money to like get it, good for them but otherwise it's kind of rough it does yeah it's not fair i would say oh i would recommend um you mentioned uh like your pathfinder group D. &D. <laughs> yeah that's true yeah D, D also works um I've gone to some D&D-oriented, uh, like, what are they called? Not a bar. They're called something different. A pub? Question mark? Tavern. Yeah. The tavern. I've gone to a few of those, and those are fun. Um, you just kind of invite people. You end up bumping into someone new. It's good time all around. D&D time. Yeah, yeah. A game of D&D, honestly, might be, like, a good activity for, um, for a meet. If you were doing a kin meet, that's an activity to do together. It'll take multiple meetings to get through it. Um, but I would just do it at, like, the library or something. Don't let that be an excuse to do it at someone's house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm developing a niche in my workplace as a therapist who works with ultra humans and have some ultra human clients, which is a good thing that I wanted. Uh, but being someone's therapist is not being their friend, and I would like to make more ultra human friendships. My hesitancy is that if I make a group, there will be overlap with my client base. The city that I live in is quite large, so chances are there are plenty of ultra humans in the city that aren't my clients, but I feel like if there's an even one person overlap, the group becomes not something I can be in and run. Maybe I'm being too careful, but it makes me hesitant to do something like organize a meetup. Yeah, that's definitely something that would be a problem. Um, yeah, that would be a conflict of interest, unfortunately. For sure. Um, I think you would basically just have to make sure that none of your clients are in your group, for sure. Because right. I think that would be the most ethical thing to do. Yeah, um, I if one of them did end up joining a group that you were already in, that would be a really tough situation, but I feel like you would maybe have to find a different group or, like, organize meetups where that person isn't there sometimes. Yeah, I guess it depends on if you're the leader of the group or not. For, like, the one that you want to run just for friends, um, if you worry, you might just have to put a note like, hey, if you're a client, I'm sorry, but you can't be in this specific group. You may want to consider making like a different group with maybe other clients or something. Just really kind of depends. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a fun situation though. I'm sure yeah. there's definitely different alter humans and enough to go around if it's a big city though. Even like just one or two consistent people you can hang out with makes a world of difference yeah it so does you it don't does. need like 15 people sometimes just two or three is great let's see I'm glad so many of y'all are finding people nearby on the map. That's really sweet. <laughs> Everyone's going crazy. <laughs> Ooh, and weirdly relevant to my museum piece panel. That's cool. I'll have to go back and listen to that. Uh, yeah, the map should be further up in the chat. I can link it again if you want, though. Yeah, I will come to that. I remember reading the little blurb for it, and that looked really interesting. Unbelievable, I have to work. Oh, awesome. Truly painful. <laughs> Thank you, guys. This has been really fun. Yeah. 
I think we'll call it there. Yeah, I think so. Thanks, y'all. Enjoy other con.